Let's get creative and add some movement to our site. First, with an animation on entrance. Let's add one in our first section. We'll just click on the element we want to animate, click this animation icon, choose entrance, and pick the fade animation. Then we can customize it a bit. So let's change the duration and then preview it. Next up, the loop animation. Select the arrow and click Add. Pick the Breathe preset we want and adjust the distance to 10 pixels and the duration to 1.5 seconds. And preview it. Looks good. Now we can add a hover animation to our A items in the repeater. Just click on Add here under Hover, choose Create Custom Animation, and adjust the X and Y scale to 105%. For timing, make the end 0.4 seconds. Then, select the image. To adjust the corners, first, unlink all the corner adjustments, then go ahead and add each one individually. Go ahead and play that animation, and click Done. Now choose one of our B items and create a different animation, but for the opposite corners. For that, I'll create a new custom animation. So here, adjust the scale of our X and Y, and gives us the same timing as the A items. Then click on the image and adjust both the top left corner and the bottom right corner to 3 pixels. Click Play, and then click Done. Now, if we want to remove those interactions on mobile, we can click on an item and under Hover, select the animation, then clicking the three dots, hit Remove. And you can do the same on your B items if you want. Because of the cascading rule, the change on mobile won't affect our desktop design. Let's preview both. Great, now we have two different interactions on the A and the B pattern, and on mobile, we don't have an interaction. For our scroll interaction, let's go to our next section. Click on our text mask and create a scroll animation. Choose the preset Move and adjust the angle to 270 degrees, so it'll move from the left to its original position. Then preview it here on our canvas. And if we don't want this effect on mobile, we can head back to that breakpoint and remove the interaction, the same way we did with the hover. And last up, let's make some changes to our header so it'll overlap with the section below it, then scroll with the page by sending it to pinned. So scroll up, make its position type pinned, and add a scroll effect transition and a short delay. If we want the header to be transparent at the beginning, we can set its opacity to zero, and then customize it with a fill color. Time to see all the interactions and effects together. Looks great. Amazing. Now your site is all set up with some dynamic visual elements. We've got one module left in our essentials course. In your last few lessons, we'll cover how you can make manual changes to your site with advanced sizing and CSS grid. I'll meet you there.